Hello, hello, everybody. Ahlan lil kul. We're going to start with the first half in English. Wa al-nusf al-thani bi al-Arabi. A lot has been said about the British pound. Fundamentally, technically, we're going to approach it from a different way here. Um, also, I'm going to visit a um, an analysis that I did here uh, for Real Vision TV in 2019 about the uh, sterling dollar cycle. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, this. In a, in a bit and see where it is standing and where it is looking at, okay? So, um, but before that, uh, this is something that I was looking, this is, was one of my favorite trades back three, four years ago when it was long uh, uh, cable and what happened to this analysis too, okay? So this is very, very important. Having said that, as I'm speaking right now, UK 30-year bond yield is surging about 5%. So there is uh, the big race between the UK and the US 10-year yield. Uh, the US is uh, reaching, is nearing 4%, something that has been reached by the UK uh, before. But more importantly, what's happening in the market? How, how do we trade this? So just to give you an idea about, about the fractals here, if you look at the monthly chart in sterling dollar, so I'm going to go into this cycle. I'm going to update you where we are in the sterling cycle. But and we're going to talk about how to monetize and whether there is more upside in that trade of ours, which was the best trade of the year, which was long euro sterling. Is there more upside or not? But here is the thing. Look at this fractal in sterling. When the UK was forced by George Soros, when the sterling was forced out by George Soros, out of the exchange rate mechanism, not the AQ, not the MU, the exchange rate mechanism. Basically, so it fell in that famous September 92 or that year 92. It fell 30%, rebounded almost a third, came back down to a higher low, and then it rallied. And this was played out the same right after Boris Johnson won those elections in 2000, and um, it was towards the end of 18, and basically we had that big rally. So here's what happened. It's the same thing. Uh, we had the Brexit exit, and we fell 30%. So here, exchange rate mechanism down 30%, up 16 down to a higher low, higher high, and then we, we fell. Same thing here, 30%, up 18%, came down, slightly higher low, tried to recover. Well, we didn't go to a higher high, but then we crashed. The big difference is that when we fell back in 2000 and 2001 in the dot-com bump, and, um, uh, we, we basically stabilized in these lows, but here we didn't. And what is interesting is that, so the fundamentals, we can touch upon them, but if, if everyone and their grandmother has spoken about the fundamentals and basically, in a nutshell, the um, when the UK comes out with an unfunded increase in uh, in tax cuts uh, that is not even signed on by a bipartisan agency, that means the debt burden is going to be so big that it's going to lead the bond market to say, listen, if this is supposed to aim at higher growth, you're going to have to have higher interest rates for the very economy whose central banks is basically saying there is a recession. So this quandary, which is quite common to most central bank is the deepest in the Bank of England. And this is why sterling is falling. And this is for the very first time. And I, this is anybody who's been, who not only has been trading since, 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 uh, since, uh, since the late 90s, but remembers also. The first time for any developed country where, where basically the bond yields soar because of obviously a negative accredited event and the currency goes down. Usually the currency pushes up when bond yields are forced higher, uh, but in the developing nation, in the emerging markets, it usually happens. Uh, trade, the bond traders are not happy with the currencies. They dump them and they send the required re yield, which is what you want uh, if you want to hold them uh, for the bond uh, higher. And this has never been seen in the G10 or the G5 economies, okay? Interestingly, just, just one last thing. I, I, you, you have to really know some, some of the history. In that famous September in 2011, when the United States of America lost its, its AAA credit rating, by, I believe, by S&P, uh, everybody thought that bond yields were going to go down. They didn't go, you know, bond yields were going to go up because it's going to be for, bad for bonds. It actually, bond yields went down and then markets went down and, and the U.S. Uh, basically 
Obama and the Republicans were in a big, big uh, uh, fight about the budget. And that led bond yields lower. But obviously, we were also in the midst of, of probably the transition between Q2 and Q3 or Q1 and Q2. Coming back here, where are we in terms of timing? Before we go back, this is the deterioration of the budget deficit in the United Kingdom. So basically, it's, this country, it basically has the, the, the combined budget deficit and the budget uh, and the current account deficit. I'll say it again, not the balance of payment, the current account deficit and the budget deficit. They are going to be well over 11% of GDP. Okay, and I remember this probably basically when the US dollar used to fall in 2005 and six and seven, it used to be the dollars falling because of the twin deficits and, and because of, uh, of falling of, uh, of interest rates no longer going up in, in 2006. And that was the perfect setup to sell the dollar. Interest rates were about to come down and there was a twin deficit. Well, how about this twin deficit? The twin deficit in the United States was, was totaling around seven or eight percent back in the mid 2000s. This is over 11 percent. So. Um, so let's just have a look at the at this. Uh, so basically, if you want to know more, where is this uh, uh, interview that was in March 2019? It was in New York. Uh, uh, basically, I'll sh I'll tell you where you can see it. You can go to a Real uh, a Vision, and this is basically this is the the analysis. And we're going to stop it here. And you can go, and you can go. So I'm going to give you the updated analysis, but just in order for you to see the the reason, because I explained, I laid out the fundamental reason for each of the lows in these cycles. And so you can basically go here to hot charts in ashraflaghi.com. So you can go to hot charts, and then you go to 2019, and you will see it. How do you do that? You basically, this is the website, you go to the hot charts, and then you go to 2019, and you click down, or you go all the way down, okay? So basically that. So now, what is going on with this cycle? Where are we? And here we are here, okay? It was March 2019. This is when I went to the New York Traders Expo. By the way, I'm going to be in Orlando in uh, end of October into, into early November for the expo there. So hopefully, I'll see you there. So let's take a look at this. So if you look at this, um, I'm not going to go through the fundamental uh, reasons to why we had the lows, but just need to know that the UK is one of the few countries in the in the developed world that had two bailouts or or two assist two rounds of assistance from the IMF. Okay, and but if you look at this, so here are the lows. Okay, it's an eight-year cycle. What is interesting is that if you, this is an eight-year cycle. So if this is 09, it was a low, and and uh, 17 was a low, does this mean that 2025 is a low? Just be careful. This means that we're not going to go to a new low up until 2025. Uh, we could be. Or does that mean that we could probably push up towards 126, 127, and come down, come down, and then probably... Um, you know, go back, uh, you know, touch, touch 104.40, and then, cl so we will have a, a yearly low, and then produce a yearly close with a closing candle up 13. We could, we, we could very well do that. The reason, and a lot of people, especially in the Middle East, and a lot of people, they said, well, the United States, is, you know, the United Kingdom is not making much, so why would it benefit uh, from a weak sterling? A lot of people are, are thinking that it's doing this on purpose. It's not doing it on purpose. Yes, they would like a cheap sterling because, um, because you know, to, 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 to increase the attractiveness of U.S. assets and, and financial services and, 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 and financial assets, but there is a limit. And I do think that we are going to have one more attack towards 102, 101, and we are going to go towards parity. But I think before we get to parity, there's going to be an attempt by the Bank of England to come and engineer a recovery. One thing you need to know that the foreign exchange reserves of the United Kingdom or that the Bank of England are much less than those in Canada, those in Swiss National Bank, and those at the Bank of Japan, okay? So this is one of the things one would say in the middle of a video full of charts and full of words, and you would basically, you would hear it with the right ear and you would forget it with the left ear, but it actually keep Keep attention to that. So, a central bank who is hardly having, you know, hardly at grips in managing monetary policy. Good luck to them in trying to manage foreign exchange policy. Uh, I'm not one of those. If you care about my, 
my opinion. I'm not one of those who basically blame the BOE. I'm, I blame more uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer and this trust here than the BOE who are basically engine, trying to barely keep high, high rates. But now they came with this policy of a rate cut unfunded and it is basically having to accelerate further and further to deep, deepen in the tightening mistake. So there are further fundamental reasons for it for why we could go lower. But the trade that you really need to know is this euro sterling trade. And for those of you, this has been probably one of our best trades because if you look at uh, what we're looking here, so we have in the WhatsApp broadcast group, you will see that. So I this is a snapshot from the group. So this is, we started going long in euro sterling in April and we were long and we were wrong and right and wrong but then july 26 we came with this chart and we said let's go so basically we came in here with the trade and we targeted around 87.50 when it was uh, just above 84 and what is interesting is that if you look at this you will see that this was the fractal that we saw okay and and i'll this is basically what we saw so this is back uh, since um you know, the late 70s, early 80s, you come down, you, you go back up towards D, you come down towards a higher low around E, and then you recover. And the, the whole thesis here was that as we were going and testing 83, 84, 83, 84 here, we said we're going to have to go back towards the 90s. And this is exactly what happened. So any of you who has traded Euro Sterling and did not go through snooze fest, uh, struggled a lot around 84 and 83, 80, 84, 83, 80. But the fractalization, yes, it's a new word and it's just invented now, of the similarity in the price action here and here, okay, uh, to this is quite, um, is quite blatant and in a way profane. And if you look at the RSI, the way we came back down towards the horizontal base here, very similar this level and it looks now the key now the big question oh but so what are you expecting yes you were targeting okay great you were at 84 you were expecting 90 this week we saw 93 i think there's going to be further gains higher and we could probably go towards as high as 94 or 95 i'm not sure about parity okay so these are some of the key reasons that you need to know and um, you know how do we manage through this yes i mean you will see that the whatsapp broadcast group you go to ashrafari.com and you see how we can join this and how you can make these trades but what's interesting is that we can see probably another fractal here between the dollar china dollar cnh which is the offshore that's the one we use and gold okay so these are the things that can tell you what to do with the dollar and whether the dollar is going to have a a, a um a decline this week being very much the last week of the month and the last week uh, uh, and the last month of the quarter because these are some of the trades here we had we were long oil we were long uh, 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 DAX we were long Nasdaq uh, today as we came down there is something quite alarming here with the DAX as we're coming back down uh, so this one, this trade actually did not go very well in the DAX, but the early one terms of, uh, in terms of the S&P, in terms of dollar yen, these other ones are going well. What is interesting here regarding the metals, ladies and gentlemen, is that silver continues to hold above 1850. And one of the things that you really need to is that there is a, um, a trend line support here which is broken but you've got a 21 day moving average which is coinciding with 1840 okay and this is coinciding this right shoulder with this right shoulder so there is so if we do close below 1820 1810 then it will be worrying for metals and now on to arabic مساء الخير للجميع سنتكلم عن الاسترليني هنا وسنقترب الاسترليني بطريقه مختلفه لما شفناه من قبل قبل ما نتكلم ونحدث الشيء اللي عملته وهو دوره الثمانيه سنوات اللي تكلمت عليها في 2019 وتكلمت عليها هنا في قناه ريل فيجن في هذه المقابله هنا واذا بتشوفوا هنا التاريخ في 2019 فلازم نحدث ماذا حدث في الدوره هذه اوكي واذا نلاحظ هنا سيداتي وسادتي في هذه في هذه الدورة هنا ماذا حدث في الدورة وأين سنلجأ بعد ذلك 
ونحن وفي اي مرحله من الدوره احنا الان في الاسترليني مقابل الدولار وهذا المخطط راح نحدثه الان اوكي لكن قبل ما اتكلم من ذلك سيدي بس نشوف بس لما طلعت لما طلع لما جورج سوروس لما طلع الاسترليني من الهيكله التن... النظام النقد الموحد الاوروبي الذي كان يفتح الباب لمحاوله بريطانيا للدخول الى العمله الموحده وبعدين فشلوا لكن ايش صار؟ لما صار الفشل هذاك من لما لما خرجوا من المشروع الذي ياتي اتى قبل العمله الموحده الهبوط والطلوع وعاود الهبوط كان بنفس الطريقه اللي بعد ازمه البريكزيت اوكي فهنا لما شفنا الكارثه هذيك بتاعت 1972 شفنا هبوط 30% وبعد خروج البريكزيت شفنا هبوط 30% بعد ذلك شفنا صعود 16% وبعدين هبوط الى قيعان اعلى وبعدين ارتفاع الى قاع الى قمه اعلى هون نزلنا طلعنا 18% عاود نزلنا في نفس القاع وبعدين عاود طلعنا ولكن المرة هذه كسرنا هذا القاع المرة هذيك في في 2001 تمسكنا في هذا القاع فماذا يحدث بعد ذلك سيداتي وسادتي فهذا كثير مهم وقبل ما ندخل ذلك بس بدنا نقول انه العجز التجاري والعجز الديون في بريطانيا تجمعوا مع بعض وتقسموا على النمو ولا الانتاج وياتي حوالي 12 13% هذا شيء كثير 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 سيء وبس بدي بس بدي افسر مره اخرى ليش الاسترليني نزل بشده يوم الجمعه لما تم اعلان تخفيض الضرائب لانه تخفيض الضرائب انت كبلد لو اذا بتخفض الضرائب بدك تقول لهم من وين راح تجيب المصاري اوكي لانه لما الحكومه بتخفض الضرائب راح تنقص المدخول وال والهدف انهم اذا بيخفضوا الضرائب سيشجعون الطبقه الثريه ل للنفقات وللاستثمار وهذا سيشجع النمو لكن المشكل سيداتي وسادتي انه انه راح يخفضوا في في الضرائب لكن وذلك سيزداد سوءا وسوءا للعجز فلما يكون عندك يعني لما العجز راح يزداد سوءا وسوءا فهذا سيكون سيء كثير للسندات والسندات ستباع والعوائد بترتفع ومخاطر التضخم راح ترتفع اكثر ولذلك السوق بده انه البنك المركزي الانجليزي انه يرفع الفائده اكثر واكثر وهذا سيء لنفس البنك المركزي الذي قال انه سيكون هناك مشكل مع الانكماش ف لكن حبينا نقول انه الصفقه ان ولذلك انا اعتقد سيكون هناك هجمه اخرى نحو دولار وخمسه ودولار واربعه ومن المخ وحتى الى الدولار واثنين اعتقد انه في حوالي 60% انه سيكسر تحت التعادل لانه في هناك خطر كثير كثير للبنك المركزي الانجليزي وهو البنك المركزي الانجليزي ما عندهم ما عندهم كميه العملات الصعبه مثل ما عندها مثل ما عندهم الكندا او البنك الياباني اللي عم بيدخل او البنك السويسري، هذا هذا كثير مهم، فلذلك اذا سيجعلون الحاله تزداد سوءا وسوءا بنفس الطريقه اللي شفناها ولازم يتدخلوا راح يكون صعب للتدخل، لكن الصفقه وهي احسن صفقه كانت لنا في السنه وهو شراء اليورو مقابل الاسترليني بس من سنه تشوفوا سيداتي وسارتي في صفقة اللي دخلنا فيها سيداتي فاتتي مع أعطاء الواتساب جروب منذ شهر أربعة لكن ما بدأت تنجح إلا بشهر ستة ولما جددنا الدخول كنا هنا وكنا هنا سيداتي من سنة تشوفوا هذا الاسم المشتقات أو التناظريات أنه في يوليو ستة وعشرين جددنا الدخول في الاسترليني هنا أوكي في هذه الصفقة وقلنا أنه شوفوا هذه التناظرية اللي حدث في آخر السبعينات نزلنا عاود طلعنا عاود نزلنا الى حرف اي وعاود طلعنا ونفس الشيء اللي صار هون قلنا راح يصير هون اوكي وهذا الشيء اللي عم بتشوفوه واخيرا قلنا نبقى نشتري بين 83 84 83 84 وكانت صعبه هون بعدين عاود طلعنا وشفنا نفس الشيء هنا سيداتي وسادتي واخيرا شفنا الصعود ولذلك اعتقد انه الصعود اللي طلعناه هون من 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 من, من 83 الى واحد الى 93 اعتقد انه سيعاد مره اخرى خاصه لما يكون في ضربه جديده في الاسواق نفس الشيء اللي شفناه هون سيداتي وسادتي وهذا اسمه وهذا التحليل هذا ياتي مع شيء اسمه التناظريه انه لما تشوف لما تشاهد اشاره هنا في الاسواق 
وهبوط وطلوع ولا وبل حركات والطورات الفنيه راح تشوف نفس الشيء حتى اذا كان يحيطهم يعني أربعة او خمسة سنين او او 20 سنه فهمت علي ونفس الشيء بتشوفوا سيداتي وسادتي واذا نلاحظ هنا حتى بتشوف انه في عندك التناظريه في الارصاي او مؤشر القوة النسبية عندك القاع هذا الذي احترم الـ الـ الدعم الأفقي وهنا نفس الإشي قبل الصعود أخيرا الأسئلة عن الذهب لازم نشوف الفضة كمرجعية ال 18 و 30 ولا 18 و 20 إذا نغلق تحت تحت هذا المستوى تحت 18 حتى نشوف 18 10 ولا 15 إذا نكون إغلاق ساعة 12 بتوقيت مكة بالليل فهذا يعتبر كسر تحت الكتف الأيسر وهذا سيؤدي إلى هبوط مجدد في 1620 فهذه هي الفكرة سيداتي وسارتي لازم نراقب الآن السوق إيش عم يسوي وبارك الله فيكم وبالتوفيق